Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali and I'm a junior doctor working in Cambridge and this is Medical Mondays, the series where every Monday we talk about very, very niche medical topics. And today we are kicking off a mini series about preparing for the Academic Foundation Program. So the Academic Foundation Program is an alternative option to the normal Foundation Program which lasts for two years, your first two years after medical school. And in the AFP, as you might know if you're watching this video, one of your six blocks in the Foundation Program becomes a research block. So it's kind of like an entry into the academic route. So in light of the fact that there's not much information about this, we're doing a mini series about it. So this is gonna be broken up into four videos. In this video, we're gonna be talking about why you should apply to the AFP and a little bit of background about what it is. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about um, preparing for the interview, specifically the clinical emergency station. Video number three is gonna be about preparing for the interview, specifically the critical appraisal station. And the final video is gonna be talking about how to prepare for the personal interview and giving you some recommendations of resources. This video is almost exclusively aimed at fifth and sixth year medical students in the UK. It is not gonna be relevant to anyone else. So what's the format of this series? Um, basically, a few months ago, I sat down with a surgeon. His name is Mr. Ankur Kajuria. Uh, and he is pretty pro at AFPs because he runs a course for how to prepare for the AFPs and he's written a book about it. I read his book just before my London AFP interview. I thought it was really good. I ended up not getting any of my AFP choices. I got reserve listed for London and for EBH, Essex, Bedfordshire, Hertfordshire. But uh, in this video, I'm kind of talking to him and asking him for tips that I wish I would have known in hindsight. But now we're gonna cut to me and Ankur from about six months ago where we're explaining what the point of the AFP is and why you should consider applying for it. And uh, would you mind sharing your credentials with us as to why we should listen to you on this? Sure. Um, so, hi everyone. My name is Anka Kajuria. Um, I was a former uh, academic uh, foundation program trainee uh, working in London at Imperial College London. I have been running a course over the last uh, three years. I've been the founder and chairman of uh, High Yield UK. We've trained roughly 300 to 400 students over the last three years um, and uh, we've received some fantastic feedback and uh, I'm pleased to say those students have been successful in uh, gaining posts after attending our courses. Also, Anka has written a book called AFP Secrets. And I discovered this book like a day before my AFP interview in London. And I didn't get it, I got reserve listed. But I feel like had I discovered this sooner and actually put it into practice, I might have stood a better chance in the London interview. I completely um, agree. So <laughs> <laughs> I just sent him a message on WhatsApp and was like, hey, do you, would, you, would you mind filming an interview about the AFP? Because there's not much information online about mm. the AFP. It's all kind of, stuck behind kind of like random people you've got to know someone who's gotten into it to get the best tips so this will hopefully give you a good start as to how to prepare mm -hmm. for your AFP interview um, and yeah you can buy the book or you can attend the course or whatever yeah so yeah cool so um, would you mind can we start by talking about like briefly why should people do the AFP sure okay um, so um, I feel AFP is for two sorts of people hmm. uh, First one, uh, who knows they want to pursue a career in academic medicine. They've done lots of research through medical school um, and uh, want this as the stepping stone to pursue an integrated academic career. Okay. Uh, and then you have uh, the other group uh, who are not sure if uh, academia is for them uh, and they want to try it out. And this provides a very nice introduction into what life as an academic would be like. Okay. Uh, you get to spend, in most deaneries, uh, four months uh, doing a research project, usually in your second year. Um, in certain regions, for example, Oxford, uh, you do get a day release, um, which is spread over the two years. Okay. Um, and uh, after the two years, um, you can either continue to pursue your academic interests, or you can say, look, this is not for me. I want to follow just a clinical pathway, which is, which is equally valid. Okay, awesome. Uh, and as you guys might know, the AFP sort of set, stands apart from the normal foundation program in that you apply for FPAS, but then you, if you apply for the AFP and you get an AFP post, that removes you from the foundation program mm -hmm. normal thing. Although you pretty much do five normal rotations and one research rotation, Correct. as you said, in Correct. most places. Uh, I would say there's nothing to lose from applying. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit more work in terms of... Uh, um, writing your white space answers and uh, obviously attending the interview uh, but I think it's a fantastic uh, learning experience uh, you get uh, really good interview practice uh, which will be really useful for your future interviews as a core surgical trainee or core medical trainee as specialty interviews uh, and also later on as uh, an SD3 interview 
Yeah, and I can completely echo that actually. Like I, as you know, I didn't get the AFP, um, but I attended both my interviews. Yeah. I found them really useful, and now I kind of know what to expect in future job interviews, mm. and I know the things that I need to work on. And if I hadn't applied for the AFP, I would never have had that information up, up until like, you know, the ST1 or the ST3 interview. So I think it was really good that I applied, even though I didn't get it. Yeah. So I would, yeah, if you're thinking about it, I'd encourage you to apply. Yeah. You might as well. You have nothing to lose. And um, it's not the end of the world. If you don't get the post, it does not mean that you can't follow or pursue a career in academia. There are lots of other opportunities. Um, so we'll talk about this later, but there's the integrated academic pathway. So you have uh, an AFP, which is the start of the pathway. Then you have an academic clinical uh, fellowship and uh, subsequently academic clinical lectureships and clinical lectures, uh, lectureships. Uh, but you can enter that um, path at any time. So it doesn't matter if you've not done an AFP, you can still apply for an ACF. If you've not done an ACF, you can apply for a PhD and subsequently apply for a senior lecturer role. So it doesn't really limit you. Um, it really depends on if you're truly passionate about academia. Sweet. So not getting into AFP is not a big deal, but you know, having the AFP is sort of helpful if you want to go into an Absolutely. academic. Absolutely. Wonderful. Okay, so we talked about uh, the AFP, we talked about why you should apply if you're interested in research or you know, just, mm. just, for, just for the lols you can apply anyway just to get some interview, <laughs> interview practice. Um, my understanding of the interviews, mm. uh, so I had an interview in London and an yep. interview in EBH. Mm. The EBH interview was very sort of personal based, you know, ask questions about your application, about white space questions, why do you want to do the AFP, that sort of thing. Whereas in London, there were two stations. One of them was a critical appraisal station mm -hmm. where we got an abstract to look at for half an hour in advance. Yep. Um, and we had to critique the abstract. And the second was the clinical emergencies where we got like a little scenario saying that you're, you're the FY1 in A&E, there's this patient, this patient, and this patient, how would, you, how would you proceed? And it was like a discussion with the consultants about, about this and that. Um, so can you start by giving us some tips about the clinical emergency station? Okay, so that was a very quick overview of why you might want to apply for the AFP. And pretty much we said you, you might as well. You don't really have anything to lose other than the time you waste kind of doing the white space questions. And to be honest, it's really good interview practice for general life, just kind of having, having the interviews. So thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. The next video in this series is going to be about how to prepare for the clinical emergency station. So uh, that'll be coming in your subscribe inbox soon at some point. But thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.